Uh, welcome back guys. Today I show you a little bit about arrays uh, and these are useful little tools in C++. It can save you a lot of time if you know how to use it properly and it's just, well it's fun to know. Uh, I'm not an expert on arrays but I know enough to get me through and I'll share my knowledge with you today. I'll define what an array is for those that don't know. Uh, an array is a collection of memory location which can be accessed by the same name. Arrays can also be called subscripted values, and yes, I did read that off a book, but because uh, I don't have that memorized, I know exactly what it does, but that's the best way to put it. Arrays are basically variables or identifiers, but you can specify how many elements it has. So imagine you want to put five names into a class roster. You can have name one, name two, name three, name four, name five, or you can just have one string array and call it name sub subscripted 5. I'll show you how that works uh, right now. In this program uh, as you can see it's, it's everything basic. I have include IO stream and here I include a string. As because I'll be showing you a basic uh, name input where the program will output the names both in the same order you inputted them and, and in reverse order. So let's get started. Uh, in this program, we're going to allow, well, let's say, a teacher to input five names, uh, just one uh, last name of students, and we'll start off with string. Uh, it doesn't turn blue, but trust me, it works because I include a string up here. I know sometimes you don't need it. Uh, C++ is weird like that. I've used uh, versions of C++ that needed string and others that didn't need string. I can't really explain that. We'll do name subscript 5 and close it. This tells the program that there will be five values of names. And arrays always start at zero. So it'll be name sub zero, name sub one, name sub two, name sub three, and name sub four. Stop at four. Um, if the teacher wants to enter five names, it'll look something like this. I set that up uh, in a table. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, as you can see, this is the the array name sub five, and the teacher will enter enter five names: Jones, Adams, Martin, Smith, Simpson. They can be anything; they're just variables. Well, they're just um, data. Uh, as you can see, name sub zero will equal to Jones. Name sub one is Adams. Name sub two is Martin. Name sub three is Smith. Name sub four is Simpson. It stops at four because once again, it starts off at zero, and this is what it'll look like. If you call for any of these subscripts individually, it will output one of the names on the right. Name sub 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, these are just random names that I picked. So we'll continue with the program here. For this, I have to, I will uh, declare an integer i. i I'll be using for loop. Uh, here I'll be using the for loop. You can use the other loops I've showed you, such as such as the while and the do while, uh, as long as you make it counter controlled. It's easier, but the for loop is easiest uh, to show you this. If you don't know how the for loop works, I recommend you look at my other tutorial that takes you through the for loop a little deeper. But let's get started. We'll do i, excuse me, parentheses, i equals to zero. Uh, remember that since the subscripts always start at zero, or the values of array start at zero, we're going to have to do it we have to start i at 0, and then we'll do i is less than or equal to 4. That's the highest subscript value. Even though it's name sub 5, the highest value will be 4. And we'll do i++. plus plus. Remember to close it just in case you forget, and we'll prompt the user to enter name. Please enter name. cn name sub i. Now why did I put i? Because every time the program runs, the value of i will change. The first time it runs, the value of i will be 0. So it'll be name sub 0. It'll take in the value of the first array. Here, in this case, it'll be Jones. It'll be name sub 0. Next time it runs, it'll be name sub 1, where I'll put in another name. And then it'll be name sub 2, where I'll put in the third name. Name sub 3 is the fourth name. Name sub 4 is the fifth and last name in the series. In the loop, actually. And to output it, uh, let's see. You want to output it the same way the user input it. 
people to see out. I'll do an ENDL here, just so there's an uh, empty line in between. And we'll do four i equals to zero. It's the same loop as before. i is less than or equal to four. i i plus plus. We'll do c out name sub i again. ENDL so that there's a line in between, and you close it. What this will do is it'll display the name the same order. So if you put name sub zero, if you put Jones, uh, the first thing that'll run is it'll be name sub zero. It'll output Jones. Uh, let me show that to you uh, as I run the program. It's running, and here it is. It says please enter name. I'll do Jones. Next one is Martin. Uh, next one is Smith, Simpson, and uh, what's the other one? Jones. No. What is the third name? Adams. Yep. Excuse me. Adams. If I press enter, it'll display again Jones, Martin, Smith, Simpson, and Adams in the same order. There. Jones, Martin, Smith, Simpson, and Adams. Press any key to continue. It'll close. If you want to display them in, in, in reverse order, I can show you how to do that as well. C out. I'll add a blank line there. We'll do four. This is where you reverse the loop. So I will equal to four because I'm doing it in reverse order. And the I is greater than or equal to zero. Excuse me. Greater than or equal to zero. And I minus minus, which will decrement I by one every time it runs. Whereas in the older loop, it increments it. Start it, open it. What you can do is you can basically just copy this line over because it's the same thing. Uh, let's run it. Please enter names. Jones, Adams, Smith, Simpson, Martin. It'll display two outputs. The first one will be in the same order. Jones, Adams, Smith, Simpson, and Martin. The second four loop will display it in reverse orders. Martin, Simpson, Smith, Adams, and Jones. Let's see it. There you go, Jones, Adam, Smith, Simpson, Martin, Martin, Simpsons, Smith, Adams, and Jones. It's in reverse order. Uh, well, that's the basics of arrays. Uh, I also told you that you can uh, call each array based on each subscript. So I'll do that for you as well. C out, and I'll just add another line. We'll just do here, C out. Um, let's see, you want to call out name sub 2, whatever the value of that is. I'll enter uh, a comma to separate it, and then name sub 4, well, that's going to be the last value, and then I'll add a comma here as well, I just copied and pasted that, and then name sub 0, which will be the first value, ENDL, and let's run it. Let's see, you'll get three different outputs here, the first one will display everything in order. The second one will display everything in reverse order, and the third one will only call three of the values. Simpson, Smith, Martin. There you go. Jones, Adams, this is the one in the same order. This is reverse order. And here you call, uh, let's look up here. I call for name sub 2, name sub 4, and name sub 0. Right. Name sub 2 is Simpson. This is 0, 1, 2, Simpson. Name sub 4 is Martin. This is the last one, name sub 4, and name sub 0 is Jones, which is the first one. It's pretty easy. Um, once again, you don't need a for loop here to input all the names. You can declare it on top, actually. There you have your tutorial for arrays. This is basic. This is just a single dimensional array. You can have multiple dimensional. Uh, I know less about that, so I won't explain that anytime soon. You can also have other arrays just like I told you if you have a test grade that you want to enter for each name you can set up um, integer test 1 sub 5 uh, that way you can enter the test grades along with the names and you can display all of them at the same time it works the same way it's pretty easy arrays can help save you a lot of time and take away a lot of confusion because let's see if you have 150 names to input you can just have one string name subscript 150 instead of having name sub I see me name one name two name three name four all the way up to name 150 that's 150 variables it'll make the program extra long for no reason because the arrays really make it easy for you and I hope that you've learned a little bit more about arrays today 
it's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, over the summer, I launched a website called easyprogramming.net. I have all my other tutorials there. You'll be able to find this one on there soon when I update it. Uh, and once again, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you have tutorials that you want to share, you can submit it. You can email it to me through my website at easyprogramming.net. And I'm making a page for other user submitted tutorials as well. Uh, hopefully we'll see one of yours there. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe.